Hey guys, Mike with On Point Preparedness here. Since I did my last video, I've been thinking about the content that I shared and been reading it and rereading it and really chewing on it for a while. And I think there's something even more significant than I alluded to in my last video. And it relates directly to scripture. And it relates to the event that happens prior to perdition, prior to destruction. I'm going to share with you all my thoughts on why that is. And uh, you guys can make up your minds for yourself. So, again, there is this article from the blog of Ronald Conte, Catholic theologian and Bible translator. And he's talking about the October 24th speech and issuance of documents by the Pope that has some shocking possibilities. Again, this is all about the Synod of Bishops that is concluding on October 24th, and there will be some some major speech and issuance of documents by the Pope. I don't think this is going to be swept under a rug. I think all mainstream news outlets will cover this. It will be made known to the world. And so instead of going into this whole article in depth, because it is fairly long, I truncated it and pulled out a couple key phrases. I'm just going to show this to you so I can build up my argument. And so he says, It's clear in my mind from everything that Pope Francis has said and done so far that the Holy Pontiff has significant changes in mind for the Church, and the most likely time for him to promulgate those changes will be the Synod of Bishops from October 4th to October 24th. And he says, In Catholic Church, a change to discipline or a new definition of doctrine is not effective or binding until it is promulgated. So, it's issued either by a document of the Pope or Holy See or implemented in canon law. So it actually will become law. So expect the Pope on the 24th to have a speech and issuance of documents that changes law significantly, um, things that are heresy. So this author goes on to say, The topic of the Synod of Bishops is the vocation and mission of the family in the church and contemporary world, but the subject is so broad that the Pope could make a wide range of changes to discipline and issue new definitions of doctrine in many areas of theology while easily relating these rulings and teachings to the topic at hand. So he's saying everything is fair game. And here's a key, key point that he makes. No matter how new a teaching of any pope might seem, it is always a teaching of Jesus Christ based on the sacred deposit of faith, tradition, and scripture. So Catholics believe the pope essentially is the true representation of Jesus Christ, and everything out of his mouth is truth and can only be truth. Pretty nuts. Every man has faults. <laughs> um, but here's some of the doctrines and disciplines that he believes will be promulgated and turned into law on October 24th, 2015. And I highlighted two of them. Pope Francis might say that non-Christian believers can be saved without converting to Christianity, and he might say that even atheists and agnostics can be saved without converting to God. Now, we know this is definitely a possibility because Pope Francis had said prior, atheists can do good and go to heaven too. From Catholic Online. Pope Francis has good news for atheists. Jesus died and was raised for them as well. Um, so, you know, he said these things in the past, but the difference here is he just doesn't say them in passing. He is issuing them as law and decree. So very, very significant event that's going to happen on the 24th if he says these things. And we know it's not true, and we know it's heresy, because in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes unto the Father except by me. Um, Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, Jesus Christ. So we know this is heresy. We know the Pope is essentially the false prophet. And how does this relate to scripture? And how does this relate to perdition or destruction? Well, we need to look at Revelation 17. And if you haven't seen my video, The Last Pope, you need to watch that prior to me talking to you about this right now. And I'll put the link here and you can click on that and watch it. But we know that Revelation can't be read verse to verse to verse. Um, it just it's like a puzzle. It truly is. And you need to rearrange things and, and, and try to find the hidden meaning. And a good example of this is in this verse 17.7 Revelations, the angel's talking to St. John and says, I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which has seven heads and ten horns. So automatically you're thinking the rest of this chapter is only going to talk about 
two things, a woman and a beast. And the beast has seven heads and ten horns. Well, if we look down here, he says, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So it can't be a man, right? But then he talks here about the beast that thou sawest, was and is not. And you see it repeated down here, and the beast that was and is not. Even he is the eighth and is of the seven. So, you know, if you were to just read this straight through, you'd be a little bit confused here. Because it says that there's a beast that has seven heads, and the seven heads are seven mountains. But saying the beast is a he, how can a he have seven mountains? So it's not just two characters. There's actually multiple beasts that are referred to in Revelation 17. And it's a puzzle that you have to connect together. And I'm going to show you what I think the beasts are. So the woman, as I explained in my previous video, that is the Vatican. The beast that carries her, which has seven heads or seven mountains and ten horns or ten kings, that is essentially the new empire that's going to be built after some type of destruction. Um, the seven hills or seven mountains referring to Rome, essentially. And the ten horns it refers to down here is the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, and they have not received a kingdom yet, but will receive power one hour with the beast. Again, this beast isn't referring to the mountains, that beast, but it's referring to the beast that was and is not, an entirely separate beast. Sorry if that's confusing you guys a little bit, but just want you to know there's not just two characters being described in Revelation 17. There's multiple. And so here's the significance of this. Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. And again, I highlight it here in yellow. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition, goeth into destruction. In my last Pope video, I show very clearly that the beast that was and is not, he is Pope Francis. He is the false prophet. And so if we basically exchange that here in verse 8, it says the false prophet will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into destruction, perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder in amazement. They shall wonder. Those whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. And so this verse here, Revelation 17, 8, talking about Pope Francis and how many will behold him and be in complete wonder, those whose names from the beginning of time were not in the book of life, could they be in such amazement and wonder because he is going to issue law and decree saying that atheists and non-Christians can go to heaven? Very, very compelling argument that yes, that many of these people, again, from God knows all, you know, he is outside of time. He knows everything that's going to happen from the beginning to the end. From the foundation of the world, he knows who will be saved and who will not. And all those that will not be saved, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, they will behold Pope Francis, and they will wonder in amazement as to how, hey, even though I don't believe in Christ, I know that I'm still going to a good place. And I think that this happens prior to destruction, prior to perdition, because after this thought has been put in the minds of people worldwide, again, I said this isn't going to be an event that is brushed under the rug. This is going to get massive worldwide attention on mainstream media that the Pope is saying by decree and by law that atheists and non-Christians can go to heaven. Many people will be rejoicing. They'll be... Um, They'll be relieved and they'll be happy and saying that, oh, there's still a good place, even though we don't have to believe in Christ. And then if perdition comes, destruction comes, these people will think about what Pope Francis said and they won't turn to Christ and they will die and they will be lost. That is my interpretation of this. Um, again, you need to watch the last Pope video because... It is so very clear from Revelations 17, 
verses 10 through 11, that the five kings that were fallen were popes from 1929 up until Pope, um, uh, Saint, or pope John Paul II, who currently is the pope in St. John's vision, and the other who has not yet come yet, but when he does come will continue a short space. That was the seventh pope, Benedict, and he did continue a short space. He was the first pope to resign in over 600 years. Again, very, very clear and very, very compelling evidence. And it all ties into this October 24th date where he, the false prophet is going to truly deceive the entire world by law, by decree, and they shall wonder in amazement at what he has to say prior to perdition. So when you see this event on TV, and I, I definitely believe we will, know that perdition is at hand. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. See you guys later.